Okay friends, it's time to get started on replacing our air intake system. Let's start by coming over to our electrical connector right here. We're going to have to go ahead and lift up on the gray tab. To do that, I'm going to use a pocket screwdriver. Carefully get underneath it and gently lift it up. That should unlock it. With it unlocked, you can grab on the center and you should be able to pop it off of there. Once you have that up and out of there, you can go ahead and lift up on this. Give it a quick inspection, make sure you don't see any funny colors. Now let's get this coolant hose off of the coolant reservoir tank right over here. Go ahead and squeeze that clamp and gently pull off the hose. Once you remove the hose, just give it a quick inspection. Make sure it doesn't look like it's dry rotted and cracked. Now we're just going to go ahead and pull this off and over to the front so it's out of our way. Next we can start removing the air filter box. On this, you're going to find four of these mounting screws. To remove these, you're going to need a Torx bit that looks like this. Essentially, it looks like a star, and you need a T25 bit. Remove all the bolts from each corner. Let's follow the tube down this way. You can see where you have your radiator hoses that are connected in by a push clip. I'm just going to use a fork tool. You can also use a screwdriver and carefully pry. We're just going to separate these areas. Once that's freed up, let's go ahead and follow this over to where it connects onto the throttle body. Loosen up that 8 millimeter headed clamp. Once that's loose, you can go ahead and grab onto this. We're going to give it a little tug forward and up at an angle and try to draw it away from the engine. Go ahead and set this aside. Now we can remove the air filter. I always just give them a quick inspection. We're not going to be reusing it, but I just like to give it a look. Set that aside. Now we can go ahead and start lifting up on the lower aspect of the box. There's going to be a couple little push tabs that slide down and in, so just carefully grab onto it and lift it up. Set this aside. Now with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and remove this entire plate right here. Looking at it, you're going to see five 10 millimeter headed bolts that make their way around. Go ahead and remove all five and then the plate. Okay friends, now it's time to start the installation process. Let's start with this piece right here. Looking at the bottom, you can see you have one mounting hole. And then as you make your way over towards one of the sides, you're going to find three other mounting holes. This piece right here is going to go along this area, separating the front from the back. Let's line this up. We'll start in our mounting bolt. That's one of the shorter mounting bolts. Now we're going to leave this loose. Let's continue on to our next piece. which is this piece right here. Looking at this one, you can see that you have two lower mounting holes, and then as you look along the side, you're going to find three other mounting holes. Now you can imagine how this is going to go. It's going to go right along the side here. Now we can line up our two lower mounting holes. Once we have both of those bolts started in as well, we'll also start in the three side mounting bolts. For the lower holes, we're going to use the two longer bolts. Also, when we do this, you want to make sure that you have this ridge coming along the back side of this. So it's going to go right along like that. Now we can continue on to our mounting hardware that came with the kit. You have three small bolts with three washers. Go ahead and put the washers right on there. We also have three locking nuts. Now for these, I'm going to take the bolt side and I'm going to come through from the outside. Go ahead and line up those holes. We'll start pushing this through. Now we can take that mounting nut. You want to take it with the neoprene locker or the blue aspect facing out and away from that bolt. That's the locking aspect. 
Start in the other two, and then we can start snugging the rest of it up. Now we can start snugging up all of our mounting hardware. I'm going to start with the lower bolts. Now we can make our way to the three side bolts here. To do these, I'm going to hold each of them with a 5 30 seconds Allen head socket. And now we'll use an eight millimeter on the nut. Go ahead and tighten these right up. Make sure they're nice and tight. Do the same to all. Let's start setting up the air filter itself. For this, I'm going to put it face down on a bench. Now I'm going to use this piece right here. This essentially is going to slide right in over this. We can push it right down. It's going to be a tight fit, and it has to be. Press it down as far as it can go. Now we're going to take the largest of our clamps. Slide this right into position. Now we can start tightening the clamp using a Phillips head. Make sure that's nice and tight. We're going to have to go ahead and get the mass airflow sensor off of the original unit. To do that, you're going to find two clamps. There's one here that holds it to the air filter box. And then there's another one on the other end of it that holds it to the rest of the intake. Let's go ahead and loosen those clamps. Carefully pull it off. Okay, now we're going to hold on to this piece right here. You just want to give it a quick inspection. Make sure you don't see any dirt or debris on either side. This looks fine. We'll set it aside. Go ahead and set all this aside as well. Now looking at this elbow right here, you can find right in the center where the bend is, you have a shorter side and a longer side. When we put this on, we want the shorter side closest to the bend, and that needs to be up against the throttle body right here. That's going to make it so this is far enough away from the fan and you don't have to worry about any damage. When we go to slide it on, let's just slide the clamp on over that area. We'll have it ready and in position. Now we can start sliding this onto the throttle body. This part can be a little bit difficult. Generally, you start on one side of it, either the top or the bottom. Then you just reach inside and you should be able to get the rest on fairly easily. When you slide this elbow on, you want to try to slide it onto the throttle body as far as you can. Okay, now we're going to have this so it's kind of facing up at an angle here. It's not going to be straight up and it's definitely not going to be straight off to the side. We can of course still continue on by turning this as needed once we grab this piece right here. Before we start putting on that piece though, let's go ahead and put on this clamp. Now we can continue on to this mounting piece right here. For this, it's going to go on the outer aspect of this, right along this area. You can see it comes right through the hole. Now we're going to take one of our large washers, we'll start right on there. Go ahead and take one of those nuts, we'll put that on as well. Now we're going to leave this loose because it is adjustable and it needs to be able to slide up and down once we grab that center tube. Let's grab that tube now. Looking at this tube, you can see that we have this area right here. That's for the coolant hose. You can see that it has this tab. We slid it out of the original. That's what it's for. Now we also have this area right here with the fork. That's going to slide down and over that mount that we just put in the box. Let's take this and we'll start putting it into position. I'm going to start by putting it into the elbow. Let's get this thing turned down in place. We're going to try to line up this bracket down here. There we are. You can see that I have it completely slid into the fork here. Now we can put on the nut and washer on that as well. Make our way under here, stretch that right on the stud. Okay, 
Let's leave this loose for now. Now it's time for our adapter. We're gonna slide this right over the inlet tube here. We wanna leave it approximately halfway. So halfway on the inlet tube and then halfway hanging off. Now we can take our two other clamps. We're gonna slide the pair of them right over this. Now it's time for the mass airflow sensor that we removed from the original unit. Let's slide that right on here. Now we're gonna start putting our clamps into position. You want one slid down to the point that it's gonna hold the mass airflow sensor to the adapter, and then you want the other one so it's gonna be holding the adapter to the air inlet tube. As we start snugging this, make sure it's as straight as possible and pressed in as far as it can go. Let's continue on down the line here. We're gonna start lining up each of these clamps and tightening them as well. It's extremely important to make sure each one of these clamps is tight. You don't want any dirty or unmetered air making its way into the engine. Now at this point, we're ready to start adjusting our mounting bracket to the position that it needs to be. Now if you were to look at your intake tube here, you're going to see that it wants to slope down a little bit and it actually needs to slope down a little bit. But if you want it to come up a little bit, you can also try to lift up on this and that's going to help situate it to the position that you need. Once you have it in the proper position to your liking, let's go ahead and tighten up each of the nuts. There's one inside here that's a 10 millimeter and then the same thing further towards the engine compartment. tight. Now let's work on getting the air filter on here. I'm going to bring it right down into this air housing area. We can get this lined up. Now if you were to look at this seal right here, you can see that it's double layered. You have the outer portion and then you have the inner seal as well. We need this aspect of the air filter to slide in between the two and then tighten the clamp. We can start reattaching the coolant tube, squeeze that clamp, slide it into position, release the clamp, make sure it's nice and tight. Now we can put this clamp into position, slide that in, make sure it's secure. Time to reconnect the mass airflow sensor. Let's go ahead and slide this in, listen for a click. Once you do that, go ahead and press down the gray locking tab, make sure it's completely secured. Okay friends, we got our intake system into the vehicle. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and start it up, let it run for a little while. You want to make sure that you don't have any check engine light. If you do, it's more than likely due to the mass airflow sensor. Maybe it needs to be plugged in. You didn't click it in. Other than that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching.